Man. Got a round. OG7 back here. And today, just like each and every day, I'm going to tell you guys some stories of V. V for victory and G for glory. The victory of understanding that if it's the B, it's up to me. And the glory when you understand the me is beast mode law deep inside of you. Because once you're in touch with the beast mode law, you understand that you're willing to stand and fight and die. Be in the army of one to protect what you believe in, which is your masculinity and your right to keep a virgin bunghole. Without further ado, I want to get in top of today's video, which is going to be mind expanding a banger. It's going to split your wig and peel your cap for you youngsters. The top of today's video is well, uh, here it is right here, guys. Wait a minute. I wrote it down for you because this is going to be a banger. Let me see here. Wait a minute. Here. Okay. In maximum security prison, when a shot caller tries to make you haul a Mississippi, do this before you are bent over on your toes like a sissy. So I want to get straight to the top of today's video. I'm trying to time myself, keep it under five minutes for you ADHD, retinin type, attention deficit disorder motherfuckers. But I want to first, man, by start by saying, man, uh, as I've been back here in the Philippines, bro, and I've seen the, I've seen the wide division between the very rich and powerful and the very poor and destitute. There's no middle class here, dude, like in America, man. And I've been to all, I've been all over. The, I've been to ten different countries so far, man. And there's poverty and richness. America and Europe is the only strongholds in Canada and Australia to have a rich, middle class, and poor here. The poverty man will reach out, man, and touch you deep in your heart because it's one thing for a grown man to be have object poverty or be poor or homeless or destitute, even a grown woman, because, you know, she can sell her JJ and her pussy and her mouth, right? But a little kid, man, come on, man. If you don't have compassion for a little kid, you ain't nothing but a troll-ass motherfucker, and you're going to get what's coming to you, man, because karma's a bitch. But as I'm here, I just get to realize, man, like, you have to have compassion for those who don't know better. And I'm just going to, I'm not holding back anymore on my videos, man. I'm going to give it to you real, raw, hard, and tough. I'm going to give you what's called tough love, man. And it's hard love because I'm not holding back anymore. Because you young boys, you some soft motherfuckers, man. One thing I notice is from 30 down, it's a rapid decline, man. Transgender fluidity, soft feminine behavior, dude, and just overall, man, like soft womenly type of features and behaviors, man. When you live by your emotions, you're very actional. You play on your phone all the motherfucking time, and you think life's a fucking joke, bro. I'm gonna tell you this one quick key to being successful in life, dude 80% perspiration and 20% inspiration meaning dude a lot of you guys man you, you think you're, you're doing good because you're a 20 something year old dude you got a job and you're making just enough money to play your video games and computer games and buy your fucking vape pipes and shit and some weed and you think you're doing good but you can't even live on your own you're still living with your mama and papa because why when you get off work man the straight thing you do is you get on your phone and start playing computer games <laughs> Like, you're a little fucking girl, man. What's wrong with you, man? I remember, man, I understand I did all my 30s in prison, but even before I went to prison in my 20s, I was in the military. I was going to school at night. I was a bouncer. I was competing in martial arts, bodybuilding. I was getting into modeling. I was a bodyguard dude. I was a masseuse dude. I was a stripper. I wasn't interested in acting back then, but I did know some actors. And when I got out of prison... Even when I was working, I was going to night school, man, because I was looking to be upwardly mobile. You youngsters now, you play too much, man. So I got to give you real tough love. So when you come over here, even you troll-ass, soft, soy boy motherfuckers, 
I'm going to give it to you real and raw and hard and tough. It's called tough love. That's what's missing from your generation. You don't have a father in your life. You motherfuckers have been raised by women. And women can do a good job raising you from an infant on the tit to a little toddler to a little baby boy. But once you hit the age of 12, 13, 14, you start getting puberty. Your nuts start hanging low. You're getting hair on your nuts. You got to be passed off to the males, man. To slap the bitch out of you so you can stand up and be a motherfucking man and be a leader. And quit being a follower following your mama. Because your mama can't lead you to greatness. Only a man can. A, a savage motherfucking man. So without that being said, let's get into the top of today's video, man. Which is in maximum security prison. When a shot caller tries to make you holler, Mississippi, do this before you're bent over on your tippy toes like a bottom boy, bitch sissy. Here's what I want to explain to you guys in life. As within, so without. As above, so below. As behind the wall, so outside on the street. Hey man, the way you carry yourself speaks low, man. Do a Google search for body language. 80% of what you communicate to a person is your body language, dude, the way you carry yourself, your stature, dude, even the way you dress is window dressing. And I bring this up because those of you who've been fortunate enough to meet me in person, honest graduate man, a bunch of other cats hanging out with me in person, like Alaskan whiskey, a lot of cats out here in the Philippines and Vegas and Cali back East, man, you know, I'm congruent. I wear skulls. I got tattoos, dude, chains and shit. This is how I dress because I'm not in corporate America anymore talking about good morning and golly gee. Let's talk about the quarterly reports, man. Let's talk about the projection of our investments in the stock portfolio. I don't have to talk like that anymore. I can talk to you using profanity. You those of you who don't like it, fuck you, man. You saw. Sometimes you have to use profanity to punctuate what you're saying because a soft motherfucker don't listen to. Hey, man, cease and desist your behavior. Your gang activity because your kudos is going to be big like the Holland Tunnel. Hello, like that. No, you got to tell him, hey, stop what you're doing, you little pussy ass motherfucker. Soft motherfucker. You're going to be somebody's bitch in maximum security prison. So I want to share with you, man, the way you carry yourself, dude, the way you see yourself, dude. It can either prevent fights, bro, or attract you to be a victim. So I just want to share with you, man, the aggression and fighting starts long before the actual fight. That's why you got to carry yourself like, I don't give a fuck a type of a motherfucker. Meaning this, guys. If someone treats you nice, man, it's okay. You're going to appreciate it, man. You're going to keep a stoic face on, your game face on. But if somebody treats you foul, you're going to let them know, hey, my man. I ain't that motherfucker, man. So you got to meet tyranny with tyranny. So I'm just sharing with you, the fight starts long before the actual fight, dude. There's words, there's mannerisms that they say to you because your countenance, your stature, the way you carry yourself, the way you walk says you are a victim, you are a pussy, and you are a sheeple, and your butt is ready to be fucked deep and hard, right? Here's the next one I want to share with you guys, man. When you're talking to a shot caller or anybody who thinks they have authority over you, remember this, man, my friend. There's only one person that has authority over all of us, and that's Almighty God, whether you choose to call him Yahweh, Allah, Jehovah, Hare Krishna, Buddha, Confucius, whatever you want to call him, dude. I can't tell you what to call him, man. I'm an agnostic, man. I've studied so much. Let me tell you something, dude. The more you study, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know, dude. It's like, um, it's like, what's that called, man? When you go to, uh, when you go to Alaska, man, and you see that the big iceberg, you think it's huge, but until you fall off the ship, you see it, the bottom's way bigger. That's one thing about knowledge, dude. The more you become a seeker of knowledge, like me and Alaskan whiskey or Lord Whiskey or you know the honest graduate cats like that who are constant lifelong learners, Drew Guest, Corey, you know what I'm saying? You come to an understanding that the more you know, the more you, you question and you realize you don't know. So the more I studied religion, my 10 years in maximum security prison, you know, the more I understood, dude, there was a lot of commonalities, but there was also a lot of things that didn't make sense, bro, based on what the books that are written. And it's his story, his story, history. The kings and everybody who translate the Bibles and holy books, they change words and idiot, 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 um, what do you call them? 
words and phrases, man, to to you you become subjected to them. Look, look the movie called The Book of Eli. So one thing I know, man, is that uh, I'm an agnostic. I know there's an Almighty God. I don't know what to call him or her or it, but this entity created everything. He's been he or she has been my source of internal power when I'm faced with the sodomites or demonic entities. And they should give me down. They would give me the power so I can smite you down with the power of the Lord. And you shall know that there was a Lord. Like it says in the movie Pulp Fiction, motherfucker. When I smite you down. So I want to say this to you, man. When you talk to anybody in maximum security prison, even at work. Heck, man, even somebody you meet that think they're more rich and powerful or stronger than you. This is the tip I want to give you. This is a power tip from body language, dude. You want to look them up and down and make it obvious that they see you, man. You're looking them up and down like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're looking them up and down because you're letting them know you're just a man like me, motherfucker, and I'm an assessing your foundation. I'm assessing your structure because I'm about to take your foundation out from underneath you because you think you're such a bad motherfucker. And that's what I want to say to you youngsters. You come on here talking about, oh, gee, I was a Pyro Crip and I was a blood man of the blood nation and all this stuff, man. And I ran with my people. And ain't no way you're going to tell the shot caller that you're going to take him out, man. Hey, man, shut the fuck up. That's one thing about you youngsters being a fucking follower. You got to understand something, man. Your leaders, man, they just got more time doing drugs and getting fucking penises up in their culo and sucking dick. Did they have time on you? It's like the devil, dude. The devil's been around. The demon's been around. There's nothing new under the sun. It just, re it just revolves. So your shot call is nothing but a glorified old gay homosexual. And he knows how to impose fear upon you. And that's why he surrounds himself with all of his gang. Because a real savage motherfucker. I'm talking about a real savage motherfucker. Don't need to have gang members protecting him, dude. I remember when Snoop Dogg, this is when I respected Snoop Dogg, because I never used to really like Snoop Dogg because him and N.W.A. and uh, Dr. Dre and them cats and Tupac, they perpetuated that fucking gangster rap because when rap first came out, it was an educational thing. It was about black empowerment and educating you, man, about the man and how there's traps with drugs and gangs to hold you back, dude, and give you low self-esteem. Then the gangster rap came out, glorifying, killing people who look like you. A lot of cats don't even make it to be fucking 18 years old in the hood. And I never liked Snoop Dogg until he came into San Quentin, dude, to visit uh, Tookie Williams. And, dude, he was walking through the yard, bro. And I remember I heard the correction officer say, hey, man, we got to wait till there's more... There's more backup to protect and Snoop Dogg was like, man, these are my people. Cause I don't need no motherfucking protection and everybody. Crips and blood, some ring on even the white boys, the woods, and the Aaron brothers was like, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> like that. That's when I took my hat off to Snoop Dogg. Cause he's in maximum security prison. And he ain't got no bodyguards. He ain't got none of that motherfucking shit. So I took my hat off to him because a real leader. Motherfucker, you stand on your own. That's my belief. I'm going I'm to stand by it and die by it. So that's why I knew, man, when the torpedoes was coming at me, I would go to the shot calls. i say, hey, man, look here, my man. I don't bother nobody. Nobody's going to bother me. I ain't paying no rent to you or no, because what I told the, the torpedoes, hey, if I got to pay rent, I'm going to pay it to the shot caller. I use strategy. I play chess, not checkers, motherfucker. I study primary leadership development, combat leadership development. One thing I know, you take out the leader, bro. You chop off the head, the body will fall. That's a military strategy. Alexander the Great won many wars by that. So one thing I knew in maximum security prison, the torpedoes were sweating me for money, having me pay rent. I got tired of breaking dudes off. I just thought in the hole one time, hey, man, use your military strategy, man. If you cut the head off the snake, the body will fall. So when I came out to shoot, yeah, cuz, you ready to pay rent? Yeah, blood, you ready to pay rent? You understand me? Yeah, man, but you know, if I'm going to pay rent, I'm going to pay to the shot callers. So take me to the shot call. I'm going to give them everything I got on my books, have my people sending money. Yeah, cuz, that's right. You're going to fall in line. So I get to the shot call, tell them, listen, man, I don't bother nobody. Ain't nobody going to bother me. I'm here doing my own program. I don't get involved with your drugs, your homosexuality, your gambling, dude, none of that. And, dude, if I can't live free, I'm ready to die hard. But guess what, man? 
I'm going to take your bitch ass with me. So if there's a problem, we can solve it right now because I'm ready to meet Jesus. Are you? And he would look to his left and look to his right, and I was waiting for him to say something other than, okay, it's cool. Because what happens, what you bloods and crips don't understand, all the shot callers is looking on the yard. And if you have a lone motherfucking lone wolf, non-affiliated motherfucking square dude telling the shot caller, if there's a problem, me and you can handle it one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano, homie. We don't need your homies. And you can't stand up on your own cojones. They know you weak. So it's better for him to back down and be like, no, it's all good. Hey, y'all give OG a pass. He don't bother nobody. Ain't nobody taking nothing from him. So for those of you who don't understand that, Maybe you need to murder somebody, go to maximum security prison so you learn about prison politics or sit down and shut the fuck up. You might learn something. So here's the next one I want to talk to you, man. When you're looking at shot collar up and down, do you looking at his structure, looking at how he stands, his posture, you look to see if he got any weapons. Then you look to the left and the right who sees to there, who's there supporting him. You're getting close proximity. And he's talking about you bending over so he can go balls deep up in you with his baloney pony dude and split your virgin cheeks open. And you're done talking. You can't talk your way out of it, man. So what you want to do, man, this is a trick, man. This is what's called ebb and flow. You want to turn around like you're getting ready to pull your pants down. But all you're doing is you're taking your right leg as you turn around and you're just going what's called momentum power. It's like when you're swinging back. It's like this. Look, let me tell you something, guys. It's more power, not me doing like this, but me going like this, the wind up. You get the momentum. So you just wind up. You, you act like you're going to turn around, pull your pants down, and then you take your foot, man, and you swing it all the way around into his scrotum, man. Bow! Front snap kick. And then when you did a snap kick, you snap it like this. It's like a whip. And then you come down and you step on his toes. Why? You break his toes because you got your prison boots on. That breaks his foundation. He's bending over anyway. You step on his toes, dude. Bow. And then you grab his bitch ass head, man. And you head butt him. Bow. And while your head's there, his head goes back. Put your thumbs into his eyes. Take out his eyesight, dude. And then, dude, you just start screaming at the, all your might with the top of your lungs, man. You shall not take my cheeks this day. You scream loud like Neonidas and Mighty Lee because you tried to talk. You couldn't talk yourself out of the situation. All commonality and decency is gone, so you got to go to savage barbarianism. That's why you kick him in his nutsack, and then when you come down, you step on his toes, bro. So let's say you missed his nutsack. The human reaction when you go to kick a dude's nuts is to go like this. You step on his toes, bro, his toes. Where his toes meets the arch of his feet, you break that with your prison boots. He's going to come down. You grab his head and your head buddy. Uh, bow! And if you're really a savage when his head is down, bite his nose off, man. Bite his nose off. And so I'll put your fingers out. His head's going to go back. And help his head go back. Head buddy. Bow! Like that. And you're screaming. So if you guys like realness and rawness and honesty about the horse of prison and you got the stomach man the cojones to hear the truth the real truth and nothing but the truth and quit going over the banky pounds channel dude and 16 in life dude and all these other motherfuckers glorifying prison make you think it's a motherfucking joke when it ain't then thumbs up the video man leave a comment about the technique the specific technique i gave you and those of you asking me where I'm at in the Philippines because you want to train with me, man, let me tell you what it, what it is in the Philippines, man, where you want to meet me and train. A coaching call is $150, man, an hour, man. But a training session with me, dude, is $500 for two hours. I'm in Manila. You're going to hit me up at og 7 back 971 at gmail.com. Why? Because what I'm going to teach you, I learned from the Israelis, dude. I learned from the Russians, bro. I learned from the Greeks. It's a combination of pancreation and Israeli martial arts, dude, and a lot of other secret shit. So once I teach you, man, in two hours, you're going to be deadly. I'm going to have you sign a waiver. And if you can't pay the 500 then, man, you ain't built for me because I ain't giving shit away for free no more. I don't need your money, but you want to come here to the Philippines, you want to trade with me? That's the cost, bro, of education. 
So if you're new to the channel, man, subscribe to the channel. If you're a value subscriber, make sure you stay subscribed because YouTube's been shadow banning me, unsubscribing you guys so you don't get my notifications. And more importantly, man, hit the notification all button so you know when I'm going to send my next video, dude. And more importantly, share. I'm going to give you guys a secret. Even if you click the share button and you don't share, it helps your boy out. Because I'm looking to get 100,000 subs by the end of the year so I can reach these youngsters. Because 2025 is going to be mind-bending for the youngsters with their butt cheeks split open, dude. And their sphincters ripped open and ruptured, man. As their hemorrhoids come out their butt and they prolapse. So until next time, OG Silverback, out. Oh.